Now the next question is, and I'm trying to hurry up, inshallah, hopefully maybe 10 more minutes. The next question is this. What might happen? In the vast majority of cases, let me say 60% to 70%, nothing will happen. Nothing at all. Person will say, carry on, this is lovely. What should you do? Stop, because nothing wrong with them. No. Absolutely not. Do not, do not, do not stop. At least a month before you come to the decision, there's nothing wrong with them. Because so many times the problem takes time to come up. It's like there's a lot of cobwebs you've got to clear out first. So I would say at least, at least, at least, at least a month of recitation before you make any decision about whether you should stop reciting or whether you should move on to something else. What if it's medical? If it's medical, do Rukia and go to the doctor at the same time. Why not? Do Rukia and go to the doctor. Take your medication and do Rukia. But don't stop doing Rukia. As long as you're sick, as long as you don't feel you're well, don't stop doing the Rukia. Even if you feel the Rukia made you better on the first day, continue for a minimum of one month. Most people, nothing will happen. They will keep on getting better until Allah brings about a cure. Especially those who are strongly practicing and especially children. Especially children and those who are strongly practicing. Often, and I have an article on, on Rukia for children, I'll link to it in the video inshallah, but generally you will not see fireworks from those people. There are two people you rarely see fireworks from. As in you rarely see like an explosion of problems from. One are children and two are very practicing individuals who have implemented the seven things that I said in the beginning. Mostly they will sit quietly, benefit, get better, and inshallah, carry on. If you're doing Rukia on yourself as well, we want it to be observed, like we said, with a partner. So someone is watching you, so you don't like doze off and forget you read something or whatever. And they're ready to take over. But in general, nice and calm, that's most of the cases. 60 to 70%, no problem. Just keep on reading until the problem goes away. If you think nothing's happening at all, and you're happy, there's no problem whatsoever. Do it for about a month and then stop. The next case are those who have a mild reaction. Could be some shaking, some unnatural movement in the body, finger just goes up, could be some twisting a little bit of the face, or they just feel inside of themselves. I don't feel, I feel ill, they vomit. So again, you know, if someone's gonna vomit, have a little bag next to you, whatever. Those kind of mild reactions. Generally, just manage the reaction, keep a close eye on them, make sure they're happy, healthy, you know, they're drinking plenty of the water that you've been reciting over. And just manage it, inshallah. If they've got movement or they've got some, you know, shaking, just, you know, keep that contact as long as it is a mahram or the same gender. If it's not a mahram, you don't do the contact. Somebody else does it. And just, you know, continue like that. If it is a severe reaction... Or shall we say the next level up, if, if, if there is a jinn that manifests itself and starts to speak. It's not so severe. Ra, ra, screaming, and this, and that, whatever. Very, very calmly explain to it that it has to leave. Tell it to fear Allah. Give it a minimal amount of da'wah. Don't, you know, try to tell it that you're not here, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to harm you. But don't make any pacts or agreements and don't listen to it, just tell you stories. Don't let it tell you stories. Don't let it tell you, I know who shot JFK. And you know, like just honestly, they'll go on for ages. They'll go on like, I've lived here since Iblis' time. I've seen the creation of Adam. And, 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 and until they, they'll tell you every kind of story. Ignore the stories. Keep yourself on message. On message means tell people nice and clearly and simply. You tell them the... I'm inviting you to come to the religion of Islam. I'm going to ask you in the name of Allah to leave. If you leave, no harm will come to you, bi-ithnillahi ta'ala, and you will be fine. If you go, inshallah, everything will be okay. And if you stay, I will continue reading. Nice and simple, nice and short, carry on reading. Every now and again, if it keeps talking, you can do that. 
Don't get in a conversation one back and forward because it will rarely benefit you. It will rarely benefit you. Stick to your message. I don't know how to get out. I want to, please, if you just listen to me, tell you a story for two hours, I'll do what you say. Don't listen. Very simple. Give them simple message. Ask them to leave in the name of Allah. Do not let them leave in your name. Do not let them make a pact with you. You sacrifice this, I'll go. You bury this for me, I'll go. You free this for me, I'll go. In the name of Allah. Then the most violent reaction. So this is the rarest of the rare cases, one in ten, where the person really starts to hit out and kick and whatever. Your first concern is their safety, not yours. Alhamdulillah, you're all adults. You know, like most of you. So please understand this. The first concern is their safety, not yours. Don't start thinking, oh my God, am I going to be safe? And you run out of the room. The first concern is, are they going to be safe? Safely restrain them. That does not mean like punching them, kicking them. That means just put a little bit of pressure on their shoulders. Get your partner to help. Just push them back so that they don't have any leverage to get, you know, you push them back at their shoulders. They don't have any leverage to, to get to you. And you just keep them comfortable and safe. Why are you restraining them? So they don't start hitting themselves. So they don't start beating themselves. So they don't like start, you know, stabbing themselves or whatever. It's better that you restrain them proactively. That means that you restrain them before they start breaking the house down. So as we said, if you try to rugby tackle them and it starts looking like a, a jujitsu session and while it can be done, it's messy. It's messy, you don't think about recitation, you're just wrestling and put, it's not nice. Much better than that is just be proactive. Sensible environment, they're comfortable, they're leaning back. Just put a little bit of, you know, gentle pressure on the shoulders, keep their arms back. Just, you know, so that when you see them hitting out, so that inshallah they don't hurt themselves and they don't hurt you. And one of the rare cases where I would touch a woman who is not a mahram, is if she started to hurt herself and her mahram could not handle it, like he could not restrain, or if she starts to hurt me and he can't get her off. That's the only case that I would touch a lady who's not a mahram, I'm not a mahram to her. Very rare that happens, don't worry about it. Have a partner there, really they're not that strong. Focus on using the recitation to weaken them, not your strength. Do not get into a wrestling match with the jinn, you usually lose. Instead of that, focus on Recitation. That's why you have a partner. The partner is just keeping them safe, keeping them in place, and you are making them weak by the permission of Allah through the recitation. One further thing that you need to do, or that you should be doing, is looking at some supplemental treatments, like optional treatments. There are lots on the website, but one of them that I would highly recommend is the seven-day program. That seven-day program uh, is there as a, like a, a treatment alongside the Rukia, not instead of the Rukia. I mean, you can use it instead of the Rukia if it's a mild issue, but generally, it's there alongside the Rukia program, not instead of the Rukia program, alongside the Rukia program. And you can read more about that. We'll post a link to it, inshallah, and an explanation of the program. We have a little video explanation as well, inshallah. We'll be in the ta'ala, post that. But the program involves the water and the oil that we've already spoken about, and basically, you put the oil on at night, you go to sleep, you wash it off in the morning and you pour the water that you've read on over your head in the morning and you drink three times a day, three glasses of the water you've read on with a tablespoon of honey or two and some black seed, black seeds that were called kalunji, the small black seeds, black cumin seeds, put inside of the water and habit soda, just stirred into the water. But the instructions are there. We'll link to that as well. That's an example of a supplementary treatment, a secondary treatment that you can do, inshallah, to help to move things along. And there are lots more of them on the website which you can, bi idnillahi ta'ala, refer to. Also, I would highly recommend having a regular hijama session. Hijama means cupping. Cupping. And... Uh, I would leave that to a reliable place and I would leave that to the practitioner to decide. 
Because you know sometimes people ask me, where should I do it, what should I do? Leave it to the practitioner. If the person who's doing it knows what they're doing, they'll know where to do it and when to do it and how often to do it, leave it to them. But it's most useful towards the end of the ruqya as you feel like the problem is going but it's just not quite gone. It's quite useful at that time and throughout the ruqya inshallah and again, and maybe provide some further information about